Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. It's a striking contrast, the two gospel readings that we hear on this Palm Sunday. The first gospel reading is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Matthew 21, 1-11. It tells us that Jesus requested a donkey, a donkey to ride. When the king came to your town or village in the ancient world, the king rode a horse, a mighty steed, strong enough to carry him into battle. The horse reminding people of the king's power. Jesus chose a donkey, a humble donkey, like the one that carried him to Bethlehem when he was in his mother's womb. Jesus is no earthly king. He does not rule by might or force or fear. Jesus is the heavenly king. He comes to build not an earthly kingdom, but the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of justice, love, and peace. His throne will not be in a gilded palace. His throne will be the cross. That's gospel number two. The donkey, a sign of Jesus' great humility. The people wave branches, spread their cloaks on the road, and shout, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. It's a kind of big ticker tape parade for Jesus. Hooray! The conquering Messiah is going to overthrow our enemies and put us in charge. But Jesus didn't come to usher in an earthly kingdom. He came to establish the kingdom of God. And so the same voices that shout Hosanna in the first gospel shout crucify him in the second gospel. Jesus didn't meet their expectations for an earthly king. A heavenly king who comes with great humility to usher in the kingdom of love is not what they imagined. But this is how Jesus entered Jerusalem humble, and on a donkey. And this is how God enters our lives today, in simple, humble ways. The word human comes from the Latin humus, which means of the earth. God formed Adam, every man, from the dust of the earth and breathed life into him. Humus is also the root of humility and humiliation, which we hear a lot about in the story of Jesus' passion and death. Humus, of the earth, we're all made out of the same stuff. We're all equal, especially in the eyes of God who loves each and every one of us fully and unconditionally. One of the things this awful pandemic is teaching us is this very lesson. We are all equal. This virus strikes black and white and brown, rich and poor and everywhere in between, men and women, young and old, it reminds us that we are all equal because we're made out of the same stuff, humus, of the earth. 
and to earth we shall return. Jesus lived and died with great humility. God continues to enter our lives in simple, humble ways. Perhaps this whole experience will make us a little more humble, a bit more humane, remembering that we are all made out of the same stuff and that life is precious and fragile. Maybe we'll be less harsh and critical, a bit kinder and gentler, more grateful, especially for the little things, more understanding and humble and not so quick to judge. We've all heard stories about the heroes, healthcare workers and first responders putting their lives on the line to care for others. Thank God for them. But there are also people responding through simple acts of goodness in a whole myriad of ways, delivering groceries, checking in on an elderly neighbor, and the state trooper. You might have heard this story. A Duluth doctor was pulled over by a state trooper just outside North Branch. As the doctor fumbled through her purse to get her license, the trooper noticed an N9, N95 mask in her purse. He figured she must have been reusing it. So when the trooper returned to her car, he gave her not a ticket, but his five N95 masks. Goodness, kindness, thankfulness, humility, a little glimpse of God, a recognition that we are all human. We're all in this together. Riding on a donkey, washing his disciples' feet, carrying his cross, Jesus shows us the power of humility, the power of humanity of goodness and kindness and gentleness and love. I pray God's blessings for you and yours this holy week. The solemn colics are typically prayed on Good Friday but because of the changes that uh, have happened this year. We will now pray the solemn colics from our prayer book. Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him, that all who believe in him might be delivered from the power of sin and death and become heirs of eternal life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Brian, our bishop, Craig, our bishop-elect, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, that God will confirm the church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of this earth, and for those in authority among them, for our president and leaders of all nations, 
for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United States, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind. For the hungry and the homeless, the destitute and the oppressed. For the sick, the wounded and the crippled. For those in loneliness, fear and anguish. For those who face temptation, doubt and despair. For the sorrowful and bereft. For prisoners and captives and for those in mortal danger. For those suffering from coronavirus and those who care for them. That God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions. And give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all who lost their lives during this pandemic, for the sick and the most vulnerable among us, for healthcare workers, first responders, and those putting themselves at risk to care for others, for those who have lost their jobs, for teachers and students, parents and grandparents, for those who live alone, for those who lack the basic necessities during these trying times, for our leaders and for all who are working on solutions. Gracious God, Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us and work through us to bring your grace and love into our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of the light be yours. May the fluency of our inland sea and the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you, an invisible cloak to mind your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <laughs>